but my yeah, I mean, I I certainly do think there are necessary truths, right? And I um, is the law of non-contradiction one of them? Well, may maybe it is, right? Certainly, very, you know, it's, it's certainly not the sort of thing that's that's um, where we encounter any violations of it in everyday life, of course. But um, you know, you can you can spend your whole life reading the literature on the liar paradox, and you know, it's very difficult to work out what's going on there. It's very difficult to just sort of. I, I think it, the, the more you read that type of stuff, the less dogmatically you come to the idea that non-contradictions are definitely, definitely true. Um, rather, it's more a kind of starting point of Western philosophy to some extent. Anyway, it's just that's just what we're doing. Rather than that's the necessarily a firmly established foundation. Um, you know, Aristotle has some arguments for it, but they're not really that good. And you get arguments for it either tend to be question begging or just bad. So it's difficult to see other than just sort of hand waving. It really, really seems to me like it's true kind of what the arguments actually are for it. You know, so it's sort of so foundational that it's difficult to know um, whether it's some deep philosophical truth or it's just something where I don't know how to, to argue against it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, generally speaking, Monday to Friday, I'm a classical guy. Maybe on the weekends, I dabble thinking yeah. about other things. You know. Okay. So now it's well, time for maybe, our, maybe our we could agree guest. on this, Alex. <laughs> maybe we could agree on this that necessarily either classical logic is correct or it's incorrect. <laughs> well, yes, I think that's right. Even if even if um, classical logic is is false, um, that doesn't seem to be. You know that that proposition you just uttered then seems to be true anyway. I mean, what if we the things that make me wonder whether of non contradiction is true is that you know maybe there's some stuff in set theory that's like there's some u utility to sort of um, adopting a different system or something. But it's certainly not the case that I'm saying you know uh, hamburgers can eat people and the people walk upside down now or whatever because the law of non contradictions false so anything goes right. Obviously that's not the case. Uh, the people who reject non-contradiction still accept all of the basic you know, black and white facts about like concrete reality. I mean, most of them, you do occasionally find, you know, read, go and read Graham Priest and then, you know, yeah, you, I was gonna, you'll see some cool I was examples. Say, our surprise <laughs> guest, Graham Priest is here to, to refute all of us here. But um, <laughs> so I think uh, Dr. Mappas, the, the, principle of uh is it the principle of explosion that that anything falls from contradiction you're, you're saying that just that doesn't apply that's not a real principle and hamburgers aren't eating people if we have some obscure contradiction in set theory uh, right that's the way to do it if you want to embrace a contradiction somewhere you have to look okay it's an explosion and that way you don't you're not reduced to triviality okay but but for dr anderson's point that uh either classical logic is is true or not true um that, that would that would seem to be like at least one necessary truth, right? Oh, sure. There's there's necessary truths. Okay. Um, I think that's one of them. Yeah. Okay. okay. Interesting. How about, how about um, Dr. Anderson uh, said that uh, the necessity at play uh, that him and Welty are using uh, is not metaphysical necessity, but just uh, can't can't be. It's true in every possible world. I have right. I, I have such a hard time with metaphysical necessity. What do you make of that? Do you think that is that just metaphysical necessity, or is that logical? Well, to me, the the notion of being true in every possible world is common to whether you're talking about metaphysical necessity, logical necessity, epistemic necessity. It doesn't really matter because the world in question uh, just characterizes like a model or something. So, so if I say something's epistemically necessary. Um, then I'm saying it's true in every world that's accessible to me. Mm -hmm. And that just means all the worlds where um, no, nothing that's true in those worlds contradicts what I know in the actual world. So you build up a model of epistemic modality and you're still quantifying over all of the possible worlds with your like strong modality, whatever that is. Yeah. So, and that's true when you talk about logical modality, you're just, I mean, assuming classical now, all we, all we mean is just a set of consistent, maximal and consistent, propositions just characterizes all of the uh possible worlds and then something's uh, logically necessary if it's true in all of those worlds yeah. metaphysical is a slightly different I'm not quite sure what the criteria is but right. something determines whether a possible world is a metaphysically possible world world or, or not i i don't know james if you've got a view on this but i don't know yeah. what people mean really when they when they say 
metaphysical possibility. Well, I think speaking. metaphysical necessity is 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 some getting at some inherent necessities in reality, like mm. um, maybe a candidate example would be that uh, nothing nothing can be both blue all over and red all over at the same right. time. That doesn't seem to be like a, a trivial logical truth, mm -hmm. but it, it does seem to get at something in the nature of colored objects that they can't be a certain way. They can be some ways, but not other ways. So I, I think we have an intuitive grasp of metaphysical necessity. And actually we, we sort of take a lot of it for granted in our day-to-day -day inferences. But um, the point I was making earlier is that, that the starting point for our argument doesn't require us to commit to some particular concept of metaphysical necessity. We don't use that term, even though um, the, in a sense, the conclusion of our argument commits us to some certain metaphysical necessities, specifically the existence of, of God. Um, but uh, the, the, the mere claim that the laws of logic are necessary truths or that there are necessary truths is a relatively thin claim. It's just the claim that something is true and it could not have been false. It could not have been otherwise than true. OK, so but let's just it, presumably you don't mean the laws of logic are logically necessary because that just seems kind of trivial as a claim i mean obviously they yeah are, that's right? circular right yeah but also I'm, i think you're saying something stronger than that they're epistemically necessary you know it just it doesn't contradict anything you know to say that right. from non-contradiction is true um yeah. and that feels to me like the middle ground between those two modalities is metaphysical right it's not clear what what else you could mean apart from right that. okay i mean you could you, you can call it that i mean take uh plantinga for example so plantinga distinguishes between strict logical necessity and broad logical necessity so strict logical necessity is something that's entailed by what the axiom axioms of logic that you accept whereas broad logical necessity includes other necessities like the example that i just gave of not being red all over and blue all, all over at the same time and i think at times he calls that Metaphysical necessity he uses those terms interchangeably, broadly logical necessity and metaphysical necessity. Fine. Um, I'm not going to fight over semantics, um, but yeah. the core idea is simply that of uh, a, tr a true, a proposition that is true and could not have failed to be true. 